Hey there, Rob from Onward Up here, shooting a little video on how I dress for winter climbing. So I've been winter climbing for many years, started in 1994, and it's been a big part of my recreation and my profession uh, over the years. So with the current Patagonia line, I've landed with a few staples um, that I'd like to introduce to you. So for pretty much since I started climbing, I've been climbing with a soft shell bottom climbing pant. Um, this one here is the Seindel Alpine pant. Soft shell jacket is also a key part of my quiver. And this is the R1 Tech Face. And this is a jacket that is also my go-to for ski touring. So it's a nice versatile piece that way. So underneath these pieces, I go with a medium weight uh, or a medium weight long john, uh, like base layer, or a, uh, a lighter weight fleece bottom. So uh, for my bottom, I use either the uh, thermal weight Patagonia uh, base layer, or I will use uh, the Kapolein Air base layer, which I have a, a pair of those bottoms as well. And both are similar warmth. Um, it just uh, depends on the day which one's dirty or not. <laughs> um, on the top, and that's where, depending on the temperature, I will go with the different uh, thicknesses of base layer slash mid layer. So I will, on a average day, I will go with the Patagonia thermal weight top, and I'll usually do it with a hood so that I can wear that as a balaclava as well um, when I put my, after I put my helmet on. And then the other option would be to do a Kapolein Air, which is 50% merino and 50% polyester. Um, or for the colder days, or if you run a little colder, I'd recommend the, the, R, the classic R1 hoodie, which has the, the balaclava built in as well, just a little bit warmer than either of those options. One thing I will do if I'm wearing the R1 or the thermal weight is I'll often wear a really thin t-shirt base layer underneath. I do this uh, to, this is the fastest drying uh, base layer Patagonia has at uh, you know, the, the thermal, or sorry, the lightweight capoline. Um, but it also is nice and slippery, so it layers nice with the, um, with the, uh, the more fleece-based mid-layer. Then the other key part is a belay parka. So again, depending on the temperature, uh, you, we have different options, but the for colder weather, I'd say minus 10 Celsius or colder, I will go with the DOS parka. Um, and this is the new DOS parka for t fall 2020, which has a combination of 133 grams of Primaloft Gold Eco, which is a recycled uh, premier insulation from Primaloft. Um, and then in the body of the jacket, it has another 40 grams of Primaloft with cross core, which has an aero gel in it, which um, basically, yeah, is the warmest uh, since that synthetic insulation that Primloft makes uh, for the weight. And I've been using that, this one for this past winter and uh, it is the lightest DOS parka, most packable DOS parka that Patagonia has made, uh, which, you know, I had some question as to how warm it would be based on how light it is, um, but it, uh, both in testing in the lab and from my experience, is it's as warm as the previous uh, generations of DOS parkas. Then, not every day, but uh, quite often, I will bring a hard shell, ice climbing. And my goal is usually not to use it and to have it packed in the, in the backpack. So I like to have a lightweight hard shell, but also one that's durable, um, that you know, if it gets hit with uh, ice screws and stuff like that, it's not immediately gonna be destroyed. Um, I use the Ascensionist jacket, which again is also my hard shell for ski touring, because again, it spends a lot of time in the backpack. And, the reason you would take a hard shell is for those, uh, you know, that when you get higher on the climbs and you're more exposed to the wind and the, the elements, um, so you can just use it as an extra wind layer, um, or for a wet ice climb, you know, potentially even on a, on a warmer day uh, when the icicles are dripping and you can get quite wet that way. I rarely take a waterproof pant ice climbing because through years of experience, I've realized that I can get really wet wearing soft shell and still be totally fine. 
Um, even in, you know, sometimes you'll have running water even in conditions where it's minus 20 degrees Celsius. And as long as you have synthetic bottoms, uh, synthetic base layer or fleece, you know, mid layer, um, and synthetic uh, quick drying outerwear, then the moisture will be evaporated and come off of your skin and you'll be just fine. You know, as, as long as you're continuing to move, you'll dry out at a good rate. All right, so some key considerations when winter climbing with your apparel is you want to have things fairly slim. So you want to have a jacket that doesn't feel really bulky when you're moving around and same with your pants. You want to have the, the pant cuff fairly slim so that you're not catching it with your crampons. Um, you want to have a whatever shell you're wearing while you're actually climbing, you want to be able to bring the hood up and over the helmet so that it's not restrictive. So this one is great that way. Um, you can see with my uh, mid layer. So this is my mid layer and base layer, right? This is the thermal weight Patagonia. You can also get a, a hooded um, Capilene Air, which would be a similar similar warmth, but with a bit of merino in it. Um, but you can see that that acts as the balaclava for me as well, which is great. Um, so I don't have to put a bulky uh, beanie underneath my helmet. And this system here, I use for 90% of my winter climbing. And I'm talking from, you know, plus five Celsius to minus 25. Um, you know, the one, when, when we go winter climbing, we generally go walking and we get really sweaty no matter what the temperature is. So you wanna have, for me, I wanna have layers that are really quick drying. So that means I generally go to synthetic base layers. The one exception, um, is I will wear merino um, in the form of the Capilene Air, which is 50% merino, 50% um, polyester, but it is in a construction, it's, it's a lofted construction, so really breathable. Um, and when it does get wet, it's probably the best base layer I've ever had in terms of just keeping that moisture off your skin, so reducing the convective heat loss, or sorry, conductive heat loss through um, having wet material against your skin. Okay, so in addition to this, uh, this is often how we're climbing. You also want to have really good, um, another key consideration is you don't want your jacket to come untucked from your harness when you're climbing. And so this jacket has enough stretch into it. it it's, uh, I believe, 8% spandex, 91% polyester. So there's a bit of stretch to it, but just with the fit, it stays tucked in really well, which is nice. Um, so what I would do is if I'm getting to a, a wet section of the climb, I'll pull a hard shell out of my backpack and like so, and I will just wear it right over top of this, my R1 tech base, and then just slip it under the harness like so. that um, and then you can usually I'll just wear one of two hoods so I can usually get by with just wearing the soft shell hood um, but if it's really wet then I'll just bring up the hard shell hood as well okay then regardless of where if I'm wearing the hard shell or the soft shell when I get to the end of the pitch I will pull my belay park up out of my pack, and the idea is these are oversized enough that they fit over everything. Like so. Also, call it compatible. Um, lots of hoods can get a little, uh, little crowded, but it does work. And then to belay, it has the reverse zipper so you can actually access your belay loop like so. Okay? What I might do is if it's really cold, I might also bring uh, a lighter weight puffy coat, often in the form of a vest. And that allows me to, I guess, double up and get a little bit extra warmth. But also sometimes I'll actually take this, I'll usually, I'll put it on underneath the hard shell, but I'll take this, um, it packs into its own pocket, I'll hang it off my harness, and th this will be my belay coat for when I'm actually 
after I finish leading a pitch, I'll throw this on to keep me a little bit warmer while my partner is climbing, bringing up my belay parka. So I can, on a really hard pitch, I can climb without the belay parka. Tech tip.